Welcome back. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law. Well, today I'm driving to go meet with a client, so I'm not dressed for court. I guess I'll have to deal with it. Um, prior to going any farther, let me say, do me a favor, hit the like, subscribe. You want to see more of this. It's good fun. A reminder for those of you who aren't familiar with the windshield time concept that, uh, look, this is just me rapping in the car while I'm driving. I may well make a mistake. Uh, if there is one, it'll be corrected in the description since um, once this is posted to YouTube, there's no editing and it'll get posted before I get where I'm going. Um, if we had solid internet coverage on these back Missouri roads, it would be live. So that's that's where that is. Um, if I make mistake, you call me out on it. That's fine, man. Have at it. Appreciate it. Drop a comment. You think I'm wrong about something? Um, and as far as the other noise, yeah, I get it. Half my mustache is white. Half is black. Um, you know, you can make so many puns about an attorney and and that you want on it that you know whatever, um, have at it, but you don't need to post anything about it. I know half my mustache is white. It's vitiligo, pigment on that part of my face ran away like it stole something. Don't worry, I'm defending it. It ain't gonna go to jail. It may not come home, but it ain't. Um, so, today it is a, you know, I'm, I'm not wanting to talk about weed or even criminal law today which are two of my favorite subjects. I want to talk about this whole brouhaha coming up in Texas. People and the utility bills and, you know, the people crying because they got a $17,000 utility bill during the, the snow they had in Texas. And first, let's... Let's just say something clearly. I mean, look, I lived in Texas for a few years. I loved it. Snow is a very rare event, especially in the quantities that they got it. That kind of cold is a rare event, especially in the quantities that they got it. Unlike Missouri and most northern climates, most of Texas doesn't heat with gas. They heat with electric. So, because they use it so rarely, an electric heater is cheap to install. And a lot of them actually don't have air conditioning or refrigerated air. They have air conditioning, but they don't use refrigerated air. They use swamp coolers because they're cheaper to operate. Um, but with the heat issues and the electric issues, okay, there are there's a company called Gritty that when electric was deregulated in Texas. It allows for other companies, just like when the phone company is deregulated, for long distance companies to come in and operate over the local phone lines and provide long distance service. Ultimately, that reduced the long distance rates. Okay? And I remember when calling somebody long distance was incredibly expensive back in the 80s. It was rare for a call to be more than 10 minutes. Didn't matter who your loved one was. Um, now, what the hell? I don't pay anything extra to call Europe. So, you know, on my cell phone, my long distance is included. So it's, that deregulation has made a huge difference in our long distance bills. Much like that deregulation of power in Texas. A company like Gritty buys their power on the wholesale market as it's needed, okay? They're, they don't operate any power plants they, they, all they do is they purchase the demand rate from the wholesale companies that are providing it. So, when you have this power crunch and companies are using more of their capacity, they don't have capacity that's being sold on the wholesale market, okay? The local power plant run by X company serves their customers but they typically only operate at a 25 to 30% load rate. So 
when there's increased demand, they can bump it up and, and add, supply more power. Well, when you have this heating demand, which is all, almost all electric heat, they're providing more power to their customers. They don't have as much power available to sell on the wholesale market. So the wholesale power becomes more expensive, goes up in price. Company like Gritty has no infrastructure. They have to pay the market price. Now the people that, uh, that contracted with Gritty contracted to pay the wholesale price. They're, they're not contracting for X cents. They get whatever the wholesale rate is. Greedy makes their money off of a monthly fee, a $10 fee to be one of their members, okay? And that made a lot of sense when you don't have a power crunch, when you don't have a cold snap that turns all the electric heaters in Texas on at once. So these people that were doing this were, made, were paying a fraction of the standard grid rate for the local power company they were getting their power for half and boy did they feel smart okay now when you have the power crunch and it locks down and there's not as much um wholesale power to sell and there are a lot of people that are wanting it it drives the cost straight up it's supply and demand okay for those of you that are in the medical marijuana markets, look, before we had any legal weed anywhere in the country, they were selling ditch weed and able to sell it all day long. Supply and demand. There was a low supply, there was a high demand, and you paid for it. Of course, I mean, that was back when, you know, you could pay 10 bucks for a dime bag, but that's also inflation, we're not gonna get into that. So now, you've got a greater demand for power in Texas, the supply of wholesale power is dropping because there's a greater demand for the actual generator's power to their clients. That causes the wholesale price to spike. The people that are connected to Gritty are paying the wholesale cost by contract. Now we're supposed to feel bad for them because they got a deal for the past two, three years. Well. I think it all washes out in the end, you know, in another two or three years of the low power draws and reduced prices at Gritty, and it, it balances out. They're gonna wind up paying about the same thing as the, the grid-connected utility customer that has a set rate. So, how does that shake out? Well, right now, they're hurting because they're paying it all at once. And that wholesale rate's gonna go back down. And then they're gonna feel like they're rock stars again, paying a fraction. Now the customers that are on Gritty got notice by Gritty from, you know, when the prices started spiking, going, hey, these prices are going crazy. You might be better off connecting to a different utility. Well, that was kind of a rough time to connect to utility, wasn't it? So they didn't get it done and they got to pay the rates. I don't feel bad for them. They got the benefit of their contract for the period before the power crunch. We understand the power crunch, it's simple supply and demand, and they were not prepared. Honestly, it was a surprise that this would happen, but Gritty is not the local power company. Gritty is the guy that leases the excess space, sells it to them, buys it on the wholesale market, and passes on the wholesale cost. They're not paying for the infrastructure, they're not paying for the, the pluses and minuses. So, you know, for all these people who are like, oh my God, it's horrible, this is what the deregulation does. No. These are people that are still getting a hell of a deal despite that. Now, how could the Texas power grid be improved? Okay, this isn't a renewable energy issue. This isn't a, this is an excess capacity issue, okay? When all the electric heaters in Texas were turned on, the excess capacity dried up, which means that the companies like Gritty 
are at the mercy of the market because they don't have any of their own infrastructure. Well, obviously one solution is that they purchase some infrastructure. Another solution is that the grid connected power companies, or the, the grid operating power companies in Texas, Texas is on its own grid, need to invest in load level. Now there are a lot of people who don't understand what that is. <coughs> the utilities in Texas have enough generating capacity to power all of Texas, even at the high load levels that that we've seen. The issue that comes in is that you can't operate all of those all the time. It's not financially feasible. Um, you know operating a power plant at a certain point your operating costs swamp whatever you're going to make on the power and you either have to sell power at an overinflated price or you shut the plant down and you shift the load to another plant which is what texas does during a lot of the other times there are a lot of plants that have been shuttered in texas and it takes a little while to bring them back online send people in turn them back up inspect them turn them back on, make them live, power them up. That's not something that happens in an hour. So, in Australia, and there are parts of Australia that are powered solely by solar and wind. In Australia, they've got some massive solar and wind banks. Solar and wind has a drawback, and you know a lot of the anti-renewable energy people will point it out, in that sun doesn't shine, shine at night, and the wind doesn't always blow. But when it blows, it's productive and it could overproduce what the demand is. So what they did is they built a large grid connected leveling system. Okay, it's called a battery. They put in a grid connected battery. The solar and the wind charge the battery, the battery supplies the grid. And since that's happened, they have had no brownouts, they've had no power shortages the battery levels it out. And it's worked phenomenal and has saved that area of Australia billions of dollars in lost revenue because of grid failure. So we know this works. We've seen it. Um, it can be done. And Tesla, among others, has the ability to, to put these systems in place. And the reason I mention this is because this is on the Texas grid. <clears throat> Texas is home of SpaceX. It's home of Tesla. It's home of the, um, not home, but it's location of the plant that makes the steel for Tesla and SpaceX. <clears throat> that there may be a company putting in a battery, a grid tied battery leveling system in Texas makes sense. I can see where that will happen, especially since Tesla wants to make sure that it keeps running. So the extremes are something you're probably not going to see again. However, along with that, companies like Gritty, you know, as long as you have a company, you have people that are, they were gaming the market. They were paying a fee to pay for the wholesale cost that wasn't being used. And they were gambling that we weren't going to have the 500 year snow event. They probably listened to all the global warming folks, but we won't go there. And the only reason I can go that far, look, man, I drive an electric car, so I don't want to hear it. Um, they were counting on that not happening. They got stopped out. It sucks, but that's what happens. Sometimes when you make a wager, you win. Sometimes you lose. This month, they lost. For the past 24 months, they won. I say 24, it could be more, it could be less. I'm, you know. So, I'm glad that power and how grid systems and renewable power and even backups like natural gas and coal and nuclear are on people's minds. It's important. 
I would add in that really what we as a society should be looking at is a hell of a lot more nuclear. Nuclear power is safe. It is convenient. It is consistent. Um, it doesn't release any of the harmful things in the atmosphere that people complain about. And frankly, I mean, I don't see us having a future, a tech future that doesn't include nuclear power. The countries like France are mostly nuclear power run. Now, I'm driving by all of our windmills right now out here. I love seeing them. But, you know, wind, wind is a good system, so is solar. Whether you like it or not, sun shines every day. Yeah, there's occasionally cloud cover, but the sun's shining. That power is there, and there's a lot of it. I think we're also going to see somebody put in some kind of uh, um, extra planetary solar collector. There'll be some form of a, uh, a solar transmission system in orbit, or not even in Earth's orbit possibly in a solar orbit parallel to the Earth. You know, who knows? That's going to involve people that are a hell of a lot smarter than me. But these are these are things that we can do. We have the capability of doing them today. And what we saw in Texas wasn't a failure of renewable power. It was a the system hadn't been stressed in so long that they didn't have to worry about grid leveling. Now they have to, now they know they need to pay attention to grid leveling. Um, Texas being on its own grid means they couldn't draw power from a part of the country that wasn't experiencing the cold. I don't know where that was, would have been, but they couldn't. So there were some parts of Texas that were buying power from Mexico. That's kind of humorous. But that's that's the situation there in Texas. I think it's an important one. I think it's important for to understand and legally the people that went with Gritty and got those insane bills those people contracted for it. They're on the hook for it. They don't deserve your pity. They don't deserve their, anybody saying hey well maybe we need to fundraise for them or we need to prevent this from ever happening again. No. They went out of their way to choose that so they could pay less the rest of the time. And they knew that this could happen. So that's on them. Um, yes, I understand there are people whose savings were wiped out. Well, you know, that's what happens when you gamble. Sometimes you lose. You think I'm right? You think I'm wrong about that? I want to hear it. Drop a comment in the comments. Hit like, subscribe. We'll be talking to you again here real soon. And I'm going to go ahead and get off and start uploading this.